So let's continue our study of chemistry. Chemistry, of course, is all that matters. And let's talk about the areas of chemistry that we can study. Well, in the last episode, we talked about uh, cooking strawberries and spaghetti. Um, not strawberries with spaghetti, but we talked about cooking spaghetti. So here we have uh, Bobby Flay, one of my favorite chefs on the Food Network, and he's working in his kitchen. And let's talk about some of the chemistry that takes place and how we would use chemistry as an area of study. Um, so here we have um, a frying pan absorbing heat. And how is that heat transformed through the frying pan and then into the food? And then how does for instance, that frying pan take an egg and turn it from a liquid uh, kind of gel to a solid protein that we eat as uh, the white of the egg. So that would be physical chemistry, the study of the mechanisms and energy used when matter undergoes change. Well, we don't know if uh, Bobby's going to eat that egg or if he's going to share it with us, but if we talked about the processes that take place in living organisms to change those chemicals in the egg to the chemicals and nutrients that we absorb and use in our body, then we'd be talking about biochemistry, so the chemistry that makes life happen. Now, Bobby has a wonderful tray of uh, fruits and vegetables here, and... Uh, that would be life forms. They came from plants, of course, and in coming from plants, that means they are probably made out of carbohydrates and maybe some proteins, maybe some fats, and all of those things contain carbon. And when you're studying chemistry of carbon molecules, you are studying organic chemistry. So Bobby has a nice here, probably marble tabletop. Marble probably doesn't have a lot of carbon in it. Uh, marble comes from a quarry. It's uh, some type of crystalline structure. And in being a crystalline structure and not containing carbon, it's most likely inorganic. So in this case, we're studying substances or chemicals, matter that does not contain carbon, and that would be inorganic chemistry. If we were to look at uh, the quality of air in his kitchen and we were to look at the composition of the air surrounding him or the composition of the food he's creating, um, we would be looking at the analytic chemistry. How is matter composed? So basically all of those areas of chemistry fall into two basic pursuits. And those pursuits can either be what are called, known as pure chemistry, which is the pursuit of chemical knowledge simply for the knowledge, the understanding of how the chemicals work, the understanding of how the chemistry functions. But if we were going to take that knowledge and then direct it towards a goal or an application and use that chemistry to produce something, then we would be dealing in applied chemistry. So as you um, travel through our, your world and on your way to school tomorrow morning or when you're moving through uh, your world, you're taking a shower in the bathroom and thinking about the shampoo you're using or maybe you're uh, cooking up something in the kitchen, um, think about the chemistry and think about those applications and think about which area of chemistry would be involved. Would you be dealing with organic chemistry, the study of carbon molecules? Would you be dealing with inorganic chemistry, no carbon involved? Analytic chemistry, thinking about how the matter is put together. So basically everything in your life has some form of chemistry and therefore many of these areas overlap in your life.